Hello, my name is Tenreiro Machado and my presentation is entitled Fractional Calculus Mission to Explore Strange New Worlds. Well, uh, this title is inspired in a, a well-known science fiction uh, TV uh, series called Star Trek and uh, there is this monologue or, of the explorers. Well, in our case, we are not exploring the cosmos or the planets, but we are exploring the knowledge in the perspective of new ideas and new tools. We must have also in mind uh, what Abraham Fleschner said, usefulness of useless knowledge. Because sometimes one of the typical questions about topic you are going to listen about is that what is this uh, its usefulness? Because we are, we are going to generalize the notion of a differential calculus. And of course, differential calculus is very important in science, in all branches of science. And uh, we have been doing during the centuries a lot of good things. So why do we need it? Okay. So uh, before going on, one of the main questions often posed by many colleagues that are new to the field is about good references for starting uh, 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 knowing and uh, understanding this tool about fractional calculus. And uh, uh, well, I would suggest it's not the only book, but the eight volumes of a kind of encyclopedia that I was uh, uh, involved with by the Grutter and the book of fractional calculus with applications. And you have eight volumes going from mathematics, the basics, numerical calculus, physics, control, or even applications in life and social sciences. So you have a very broad overview with uh, this uh, involved many authors. And uh, so you can see uh, recent advances about this topic. Now, uh, also in a philosophical perspective, uh, often people ask uh, where do you know that we can apply or where we apply? Well, we can apply to everything. And uh, I coined the, this uh, phrase many years ago, based again in artistic uh, the song by Louise Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. And uh, a fractional calculus researcher can say, what a fractional world. Because everything that you, you have in Mother Nature, the clouds, the mountains, the trees, the water in the lakes or in the sea and the rivers, everything uh, uh, flows as, and, as a dynamics. Often people make confusion between fractional calculus and fractals. Fractals is geometry. So if we see this picture stand still, maybe you say a tree and the leaves are fractals or the clouds are fractals, which is correct. That is to say objects with a non integer dimension. But if you see them moving, flowing in the skies, flowing in the rivers, moving in the trees, then you have fractional dynamics, which is a differential calculus. And uh, uh, we are starting to have, this is not so common in uh, human technology, but we are starting to have a few examples in, uh, uh, let's say, in fractional calculus. And you have, for example, these aircrafts here, uh, we are, that are not the standard ones with uh, uh, only a few engines. You have a collection engines and uh, uh, in fact is a distributed uh, dynamic structure that has the effect of being much more effective much in the, from the point of view of energy consumption than standard integer, let's say, uh, structures, usually in uh, 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 airplanes. Uh, for example, in this case, I proposed a model where the dynamic coupling between the motors was, uh, uh, let's say, simulated as an analogy with an electrical circuit where the coupling is performed by means of transformers, okay? And then the, the friction uh, to the air is uh, 
analog the resistance and some uh, difficulty and uh, some impedance uh, of the for the plane and the, uh, the uh, to move along the atmosphere is simulated by uh, inductance okay so a kind of spring like uh, and uh, uh, we got a very interesting result where the Bode diagrams this is a linear model it's very simplified of course you see that the more motors you put in the structure the larger is the bandwidth where you have a fractional behavior by fractional behavior in this case you have slopes in the amplitude diagram which is the plot upstairs where the slope is not a multiple of plus or minus 20 decibels per decade or if you see in the phase diagram is not a multiple of 90 degrees positive or negative you see very uh, uh, clearly for example in the phase that you have about 43 degrees in the uh, middle band okay so this is typical of, of uh, results you get when you are thinking not in the let's say classical way where uh, you have only uh, some concentrated in some points some uh, objects but you have a more distributed structure either uh, in mechanical engineer or in electrical engineering so let me also in this uh, uh, perspective of exploring strange uh, new worlds and strange or uncommon new applications um, I started uh, this um, part on let's say uh, loosely speaking exploring food and I start with some plants and some vegetables and um, and then I move to uh, liquids like wine or coffee or milk and uh, what I'm showing you uh, is a, 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 exp a simple experiment with wine one of the first I did I, I picked up a, a collection of 16 Portuguese wines some red some white from different uh, regions and uh, I did a very simple experiment call, called spectroscopy, electrical spectro spectroscopy, where you have a, a generator alternating sinusoidals, and you can put some adaptive resistance. You, you put the liquid, in this case the wine, in some uh, uh, small uh, uh, vase, and you uh, connect uh, the, gener the AC generator uh, with the adaptive resistance RS, with two electrodes inserted in the wine and you collect information about the amplitude of the current and the voltage that you apply okay and then you have of course the resistance but you have also some impedance of the of the wine of course it depends on the how much uh, deeper is the immersion of the electrodes and depends of course the distance between the electrodes but if you keep them fixed then you can uh, vary the amplitude or to see if it is linear or not linear and it is linear and you can also uh, change the frequency and then you have the frequency response and you can plot uh, Bode diagrams or Nichols diagrams or uh, whatever you want so and we did that and we see in the left part uh, the dots the black dots are the experimental values and the, the, the red line, the continuous red line, is an approximation given by the equation which is upstairs, which is a six parameter model uh, with uh, uh, again K. This K depends on the temperature, depends on the distance between the electrodes, and so forth. And the, but you have two zeros, Z1 and Z2, and you have three fra fractional orders alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta okay and you can calculate this of course you can have better approximations if you put a more complicated transfer function but uh, uh, this is seems for us good enough and uh, of course you can have also approximations with integer order but to get the same accuracy with integer order transfer functions you need much more uh, parameters 
okay not only six we did in some papers the comparison and the difference to get approximately the same precision the, the, the difference between fractional order and uh, integral order the number of parameters was huge okay so in the in the right part you have a comparison between the electrical parameters that is to say by electrical parameters i mean the parameters of the transfer function obtained by electrospectroscopy where you have the gain k the zero z1 and z2 and the fractional orders alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta in the top in the first row and we had also some colleagues from chemical engineering that helped us in this study and we obtained for example alcohol acidity sugar density later we extended to uh, to other chemical compounds like tannin and so forth but just to keep it simple we have here the parameters and the arrows means the correlation the in this case the pearson correlation between the different the different parameters okay and we found out that some were not so important but for example the fractional orders uh, and so forth were uh, significant but this depends on the type of liquid of course so we found that uh, that it was interesting and important to uh, uh, describe this uh, the, the kind of wine and we could by clustering techniques this is uh, for a, a clustering technique called multidimensional scaling uh, we could get some clusters in this case q1 q2 and q3 uh, when we compare the transfer functions that is to say the frequency response okay and uh, we in the left we have the, the the clusters obtained by multidimensional scaling when we use the transfer function but to see if you get the same or not in the right we have using the a comparison using the chemical the chemical uh, parameters that i showed you previously and we see exactly the same clusters of course you can say well the red wine represented by red dots and the white wine represented by blue dots they don't you don't get red in one side and blue in the other side that is correct but we get the same clusters both with the electrical uh, let's say approach or with chemical approach and that is important uh, with the, this validate somehow the, that correlation we noted before so you have uh, like a dictionary dictionary you have the the electrical way of doing things and the chemical way of doing things well the advantage of the electrical way is that, that is that it's very fast to perform and uh, very simple to automate so you can have, can have almost an online scheme, control scheme, if you want, okay? And uh, then we did later, uh, for example, for milk. In fact, we did for coffee, tea, uh, vegetable, drinks, many things. But this is for milk. And we have 19 uh, types of milk from uh, cow, goat, fortified, skimmed, whatever. And the, the experiment is roughly the same. We put some adaptive resistance. <coughs> you have a vase with two electrodes and we apply uh, uh, sinusoidal excitation and you measure the current and the voltage and then you calculate impedance. And you have on the left, uh, uh, in this case, a real versus imaginary plot of the frequency response. That is to say, uh, a kind of Nyquist diagram of the impedance. We, uh, in the, re in the black is the the real data in red it is the the approximation model again with the same kind of transfer function and uh, in the right part you have the correlation between the the electrical parameters and the chemical parameters which are the calories the sugar the fat the proteins density acidity and and so on so in this case we have more uh, chemical parameters in fact we did also for the wine i'm just presenting a simple case and we see very high correlations for example between 0 2 and uh, proteins or acidity and so forth so you have kind of two completely different descriptions but uh, 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 with uh, strong correlations 
Of course, we could ask in the wine, we did it, and in the milk and that. Is it necessary to capture all the frequency bandwidth uh, that we had uh, available from the, the, the oscilloscope and from the signal generator and so forth? And uh, the, so we divided the frequency response that was from a few uh, uh, dozens, about 10 to 20 hertz up to 1 megahertz. We divided into bands, let's say low frequencies and high frequencies. And this is exactly in black the same data, but we have here the approximations by much simpler transfer functions because now uh, and they are represented in uh, red for the low frequencies and in blue for the high frequencies and it's much easier uh, to get a good fit in this case. Uh, we are not trying to fit in all uh, bandwidths and uh, so the question is uh, the, probably, and it was verified, it was correct, the low frequency, we don't need to one, go to 1 megahertz or to 100 kilohertz uh, if we go to a, a lower bandwidth, maybe it's sufficient to characterize and it gets a much easier transfer function with only a few parameters. And it is what you get in the, the right part of the, uh, of the screen where you have again the same type of parameters and the correlations, okay? The Pearson correlation. We did again uh, 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 clustering technique based on the frequency response, the, the measuring of the similarities uh, and the distance, or inversely the distance between the, the samples is based on this distance where you uh, separate the real part uh, uh, written in the left and the imaginary part. So this distance is uh, a kind of uh, variation to complex numbers at so-called Canberra distance, okay? The Canberra distance, we could use others, by the way, but uh, is very interesting because for this kind of applications, because it, allow, it allows you to compare uh, small numbers and high numbers. So it works in a relative way, instead of using the Euclidean, uh, for example, Euclidean distance that works in the absolute way, okay? And this is the clusters we got if we put, for example, all the experiments, the wine, the, 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 uh, in red dots, in the milk, in blue dots, some vegetables and some leaves, okay? So the leaves in black and the vegetables in violet. And we see uh, that uh, this is without models, just the frequency response in this case. <coughs> And we see that the clustering technique, multidimensional scaling, gets a, a very nice cluster for the milk. All dots are very close together for the wine, but not so uh, uh, effective for discriminating between the vegetables and the leaves. Okay, by vegetables we did uh, potatoes, onions, uh, cucumber, and so forth, by the way. So, and the leaves we did for, did for several sizes and several different uh, species, okay? So, a second topic that I would like to talk about, that again is to explore, uh, I would say the unknown, but uh, it's not common, is about artistic uh, things, in this case paintings, where uh, we are used often in many paintings to have again uh, the, the uh, portrait of someone or some building or some uh, um, structure. So it's again a kind of concentrated uh, information. But we have also lots of examples in, uh, in paintings and artistic representations of where you have a kind of distributed uh, structure. And again, if you think in distributed, you think in fractals. But uh, fractals, again, I emphasize, are, they have some relationship with fractional couples. It is not the same. Fractals is about uh, measuring only the, uh, the dimension 
of the object that we are analyzing. But fractional calculus measures the dynamics in some sense, can be in time, can be in, sp in space, or can even be by generalizing some other concepts, okay? That use standard integral calculus. So we had a few papers uh, analyzing the, the, the portraits, paintings, and in this case, I'm showing just one example, we did about 100 painters going by in seven centuries, going from the period time from 1,300 up to 2,000, okay? And uh, so we have uh, different uh, artistic conceptions and uh, whatever. And uh, for each painter, we consider between 10 and 38 works. So, and uh, so it gives 1,300 roughly artworks that we analyzed, okay? And uh, so we have different uh, kind of, uh, uh, of fashions and movements and different countries and so forth. We, I should say that we started by 1,300, which coincides with the beginning of so-called so signed paintings. They were in, by, in monasteries, by religious uh, um, purposes, and before that we have paintings, of course, but they are not signed. So it is easier for us to identify uh, in these 700 years. And that's why we uh, decided to adopt this uh, time window. And um, of course, during these uh, years, the, 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 uh, the paintings uh, had some, uh, some problems. They are not ideal as the, as they, as the, when they were uh, concluded. So we have some frames or artifacts or cracks or whatever. So, and they have different sizes. And so, so we captured the pictures from these uh, uh, 1,300 paintings and we converted and we deleted. It, uh, it was uh, almost manual work to delete uh, uh, frames or uh, some artifacts. Then we converted to the picture to a matrix. In fact, here in the slide it says gray, but we did with gray and color, okay? And we converted all pictures to uh, 500 by 500 metrics, okay? And uh, uh, we started uh, doing, for example, a histogram, which is uh, for a very well-known picture in the left corner. Uh, we have the histogram by uh, from black to white in the right, and we decided to uh, uh, study that using information theory. But later we did more. So this is, uh, we did with the color, for example. We, we found for RGB, for example, we found that uh, in gray or in color, there is no such a big difference, by the way, okay? So from the point of view of what we study, and we decided to study using information theory, and in this case, using entropy, for example. And uh, uh, there is the Shannon entropy, but there are a few proposals of uh, fractional entropy, that is to say, using the fractional calculus concepts to generalize the Shannon entropy. Well, uh, uh, we have, uh, in this case, what we call parametric entropy. We have a parameter, which is the fractional order, and we can tune the fractional order to get a, a more, a better sensitivity to the uh, object or, the, or to the uh, phenomenon that you are analyzing. So we did an extensive uh, testing of all paintings with different values of parameter alpha, which is the fractional order, and we got that the maximum sensitivity could vary a little bit from painting to painting, but in average 0 0.75 would be the, the best. Okay, uh, I can tell you, it's not in the slides, that um, uh, if for alpha equal to 0 is the Shannon entropy, you get exactly Shannon entropy. And if you go, for example, from 0, 0 for 0 0.1, 0 0.2, you get a monotonic variation. And the maximum sensitivity is about 0 0.75. But um, the, uh, the, roughly, the, the, the information you get is exactly the same. 
in the paper we did with Shannon entropy and the fractional entropy, and you get the same conclusions. But the fractional entropy, by tuning alpha, you get a better sensitivity. So it's like if you have amplifier, audio amplifier, you have some signal and you amplify it better. That's the main issue. But the, the results, or better saying, the conclusions is roughly the same. It's only more visible. Here you have, using the fractional entropy, a clustering technique that gives you trees. So these trees, uh, 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 each number is in the leaves represents a painting. So uh, number nine or number 90, uh, it, not, in fact, not a painter, a uh, painter, not a painting, but a painter with several paintings. So as I told you, a few dozens of paintings for each painter. So uh, after processing that, you get this tree in black where each, uh, each leaf is a painter. Now, we superimpose uh, uh, interpolation for the dates. So you have the time uh, uh, reference in the horizontal colored line in the top from 1300 up to almost present place, 2000 in yellow. And we found, uh, you, at least using this information, that uh, uh, of course the, the, the structures were different, but uh, the, the, the there was not a correlation between the the painter and uh, and uh, the cluster where it was uh, inserted. So uh, there was not a, uh, there is a global idea. You see, for example, the, the yellow part for more recent in the right, and the green and the blue more concentrated in the left. But only very, let's say, uh, global. There is not a precise uh, a sign of color blue or yellow or green to a given cluster. So it seems, according to this uh, uh, analyzing tool, that uh, what is behind is not so much the, the if this uh, the, uh, 500 years ago or present day, but what is more uh, uh, behind the, the paintings is the information that they show and that information does not sh change so much in time. And uh, I conclude my uh, uh, presentation and uh, you, I am putting in this slide the nice picture that uh, uh, supports the conference where you have again a fractal picture if you analyze only the geometry but you have also uh, uh, underneath this picture, you know, you have a dynamics of the, of the air, of the water, and that is fractional dynamics, okay? You don't see there uh, a solid line or a curve, you see a diffusive with some vortex, and that is from fractional calculus. And so I think the picture it fits very well in the idea that I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.